righty. I'm here for lesson five about the airframe. Um, you know, there's not really a packet for this. It's just more like memorizing these parts of the plane. Um, I will have a sheet for you to fill out in class. It'll look like, uh, let's see if I can find a picture of it here. It'll probably look like this, and I'll give you a few minutes in class to fill it out. But it is good to sort of learn these parts, kind of what the point of them is. I didn't see a real point in taking a lot of notes because this is something that you would definitely learn throughout flight training. But these are all terms we're going to use quite a bit in class as we talk about aerodynamics and aircraft and flight systems and all that stuff. And remember, private pilot knowledge is usually made up of, you know, one of three categories. It's pilots and people. It's aircraft, airports, airspace. And, of course, weather kind of can be in a lot of different ones. But we're focusing on the aircraft portion right now. This is kind of the beginning of that. So let's get to know an, an, a normal airplane a little bit. There's all kinds of different airplanes. There's some variations of some of these things we're talking about. I mean, a wing is a wing, however, an elevator. There might be also be a stabilator or, you know, horizontal and vertical stabilators may be incorporated in some other way. There's all kinds of different flaps. There's all kinds of different landing gears. Really, to cover every single make and model would be kind of... Uh, not super beneficial to you. It's really just important to get to know the airplane that you are going to be flying. We're going to be using uh, Cessna 172 as our um, kind of our center of our focus for this class um, just because it's a really basic, very popular training aircraft. However, there are also Piper Warriors, Piper Archers. There's uh, DA-40s by Diamond. These are all very popular aircraft and very good training aircraft as well. So, Or there might be something else you're flying out there as well. Who knows? You can learn in all kinds of different planes. But they all kind of have the basic parts. So let's get to that really quickly here. Um, so lesson five, the airframe. So the main components of the airplane are the fuselage, the wings, the empennage, the flight controls, the landing gear, or the undercarriage, and the engine and propeller. Um, if the fuselage is the body of the airplane... Um, which all of the components are attached, and it contains a cabin. For modern aircraft are of a semi-monocoque design, is, that's how you say that, semi-monocoque, with light framework covered by a skin. Both the skin and the framework absorb the stresses of flight. Now, in modern um, carbon fiber type airplanes, um, like a DA-40, like a Diamond DA-40, they typically have are all just kind of one piece, and they have some metal components in them, but the, in that case the skin takes almost all the stress. So you've got to be careful with carbon fiber not to have any hairline fractures or anything like that. But once again, get to know your training aircraft uh, when you do get around to flight training. Then, of course, we have the wings. Wings are probably the most popular part of the airplane. This is the lifting surface on the plane. The wings carry themselves plus the entire load of the aircraft. Wings are generally constructed, constructed with a main spar that bears the weight of the aircraft and then a lot of other stuff attached to that spar. And most aircraft have fuel tanks in the wings because it's a good place to put it because it helps balance out the plane and there's some empty space out there that they wanted to use. And it's between the curved upper and lower surface with the ribs acting as the end caps. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. Some aircraft, like high wings like the Cessna 172, have struts that help provide extra strength by adding a connection point to the fuselage. And then there's also some called a cantilever wing. This doesn't have struts. I know it's really hard to see in the background here, but this little thing running from the wing to the body, that's a strut. That's called a strut. A cantilever wing won't have that. It'll be all built into the integrity of the, the, the 90 degree point where the wing attach, attaches to the fuselage. And some have more than one aircraft and they're called as such like biplanes, triplanes, things like that. Now we talk about the, the strut, the main spar, right? The main spar sort of runs the entire length of the wing and you have these ribs that are in the inside and here's the main spar right here that's running all the way around it goes to the sometimes the other wing as well and then we have a fuel tank sort of built into it right here up here in this this uh part right here so you see the wing doesn't take up the whole uh sorry the fuel tank doesn't take up the whole wing it just takes a part of it um here's a low wing monoplane here's a high wing monoplane and this is a, mono, a biplane. Monoplane means it just has one set, of, one wing. Biplane means it has a upper and lower wing as well. Flaps. So flaps are used to slow the aircraft down while descending or on approach to a runway. They can be used for extra lift on ta takeoff. And we're going to talk more about flaps in section C. Well, section C. And I've rechanged. I changed the names of these. So we'll talk about it later when we get to uh, some aerodynamics and things. Then we have the empennage. This is the tail section of the plane, and it's generally where the horizontal and vertical stabilizer are attached. So here in this picture, we have the vertical stabilizer going up and down, and we have the horizontal stabilizer going 
through like this. And this whole apparatus, this whole part of the plane is called the empennage. It's a French word. I've been told that it means like the feathers on the end of an arrow. Is that the same word? I don't speak French, so I don't know. But anyways, it's an easy way to remember that. It's kind of like the tail feathers on an arrow there, but that's called the empennage of the plane. And then we have our flight controls. The main flight controls are elevator, ailerons, and rudder. Elevator, ailerons, and rudder. And they're used, uh, they're operated via controls in the cockpit. These controls can either be a stick, it could be like a side stick, it could be a yoke, and they're driven by pulleys and cables or push rods and bell cranks in a combination of the two. There are stops built into the system to prevent overextension and damage to the components. Then we have our landing gear, also known as the undercarriage. It holds the weight of the aircraft when on the ground. It's either a tricycle or tail dragger style. The tricycle may have a steerable nose wheel or free casting one on the front, and all have brakes on the main gear. Landing pressures are absorbed either through oleo struts that contain a mixture of oil and air pressure or spring, and uh, which absorbs all that shock there. So the main gear, that's the two main gear, not the nose gear, not the one under the nose, but the two main gear, they um, carry most of the load of the plane while it's on the ground, and especially during takeoff and landing. And they're a lot more robust than the nose wheel. And they're attached to the main structure, usually with a lot of strength. Okay, so there we go. So here's different kinds of like, you might call them shocks. Like this is an oleo type design, so it may have some liquid and air in there that help absorb it as, as it goes. This is just like a spring. Like this whole thing in this case is more like a leaf spring that just sort of flexes as you land. And it doesn't really have a piston or anything like that in it. And here's another type of oleo design there on the right side here, right here. And then you have some that have retractable gear. When we get to some uh, landing gear systems later on, but we'll talk a little bit about, more about those. Um, but you typically they'll have some sort of weight on wheel, wheels switch or a squat switch, which activates when the struts are compressed to prevent it being on the ground. So you've got a lever in the plane that can bring the gear up into the plane or not. Now, a lot of training airplanes don't have this because it's just extra weight that you don't really need for training. Um, but plenty of planes have them as well. But when you're on the ground, if you try to move that lever, a lot of them have a squat switch. So when there's weight on wheels, it connects. Like when there's weight on it, it's just like a little switch, like teeny tiny switch, but it, can, it closes a circuit and it won't let you activate that. And so then when it takes off and the gear starts to hang down a little bit, it opens up that switch. So then you can retract that gear when you're in flight. It just helps pilots not do boneheaded things where you just throw the lever gear for whatever, a gear lever for whatever, and collapse the gear on the ground and then just, you know, have a lot of maintenance that is very costly. Um, nose wheel is typically lighter construction than the mains. It can be steering or free casting. Um, it can look something like this here. Um, nose wheels, they, they are prone to shimmy, which is why many are equipped with something called a shimmy damper for unwanted vibration. So you may have something with piston like this. In a torque link. A Skyhawk has these. A lot of a lot of Piper brand aircraft have them as well. Um, but yeah, a nose wheel, a free caster, by the way, in case you're wondering what that is. If you ever have like a chair that has those wheels on the bottom that you can just move the chair all around uh, while you're sitting in it or while you're pushing it down the, the hallway or whatever, those are caster wheels. You actually have planes that have like a nose gear and it has like a free caster nose gear. So as you turn with the mains, it sort of swings around with it, but you don't really steer it with the rudder pedals. And we'll talk more about flight controls later on. Tires, uh, well, you know, tires are tires, just like on your car. You always want to check for proper inflation. Uh, you always want to look at them, make sure that there's no um, what we call steel cord showing through the, the rubber or anything like that. Um, always check for proper inflated uh, inflation before you take off. And always look for those flat spots. Maybe somebody locked up the brakes on their last landing and put a ball spot on You don't want to blow out a tire on landing. It can... Um, jerk you left or right when you're landing and never begin breaking light aircraft with the flaps deployed as this is the leading cause of flat spots on tires we can talk more about that in class and most of them have some sort of differential braking uh, differential braking means that you have it on the main gear so you've got two gear kind of hanging out one on the left and one on the right and um, you have a brake on your rudder pedals at the top it's called a toe brake or maybe you've got some sort of lever that moves it but most of the times they have toe brakes and if you push the right 
one, sorry, that would be right one <laughs> on that one. It would, it would lock up that right break, mm -hmm. but not the left. If you push the left one, it would lock up the left break, but not the right. But if you push both of them evenly, it'll lock them both up at the same time. So that way, though, you can control them on the ground. You can use them to turn. There's a lot of, a lot of handiness that come with that as well. So, um, yeah, so brakes, some sort of differential braking there. All right. Uh, brakes should be checked during the roll on each taxi, um, and you should be able to push on the left and right brake, and it activates just a little simple plunger system that then just squeezes the brake uh, pad on the left or the brake pad on the right. All right, flight controls. We'll watch a video in class on flight controls. It will give you some more explanation on that. And we'll do this little worksheet in class to see what you guys remember. All righty. So let's talk a little bit about the engine and the propeller before we get much further. So the engine's usually mounted to the front of the aircraft or on the wings, and it's separated from the cockpit by something called a firewall. The propeller is either a fixed pitch or a constant speed pitch or a variable pitch. Um, for example, this is a variable pitch prop here. This is a fixed pitch as well, but you can have a two-bladed one that's fixed pitch. It doesn't have to have three blades in order to be that. And uh, there is a little... Little just knowledge here, a little trivial knowledge for you, but there's something called a complex airplane. And a complex airplane is one that has retractable landing gear, available pitch propellers, and retractable flaps. And sometimes they have to have special training in order to do that. They've also added some other things to complex airplanes, including TAA, which stands for Technically Advanced Aircraft. Those are ones with the glass panels and all those things, but we can talk more about that specifically later. There's not a lot of questions on the written exam about that. Uh, we'll get to this later. And then we're going to talk about the engines. We're going to talk about engines next. Um, so for the engine part of this, you will want to um, have some basic knowledge. So I'm just going to introduce it now, and then the whole next lesson, lesson, I, well, currently it's lesson six. It may change numbering later on, but the next lesson, should, we'll, we'll talk more about engines. Um, this was mostly about the power frame, but, uh, airframe. So this is what we call horizontally opposed. As, if you look here, you can see that these pistons... So we're looking down on the engine from like a bird's eye view in this picture here. And you can see that the pistons are opposed from each other. Now pistons go in and out. We're going to learn all about this. Don't worry if you're like not an engine, you know, not a gearhead when it comes to engines or whatever you want to call them. Uh, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it. But these things are pistons that are laying on the front. This is a six cylinder. So there's six pistons. There's six cylinders in this aircraft here. And then there's a crankshaft that goes down the middle there. And we're looking down on it. So this is horizontally opposed. You may have heard of something like a V8 or a straight line six or something like that. Well, in a V8, the pistons are all in a V shape going to the crankshaft. In a straight line, they're all in one line and they're pushing on the crankshaft sideways. In this case, they're literally laying flat next to each other. And um, we have what's called the four-stroke engine cycle. And basically, we have intake. That's when we take in fuel and air. Then we have compression. The piston head moves up, compresses those things. Then we have power or the ignition. That's when a spark plug sparks it and burns it. And when it explodes, or it shouldn't explode, but when it burns inside that cylinder really quickly, it pushes that down. And then an exhaust valve opens. And we have the four step, which is exhaust. And all of that's happening within each of these cylinders. Each of these cylinders, in, in, it's timed. All righty. If you have any questions, be sure to write them down somewhere and ask them when we come to class next. And uh, we'll film just another video about that engine coming right up. Thanks.